Chuck Wilder here. CRN. Let me tell you about my guest, Kimberly Dvorak. D V O R A K. I give you that spelling because she is streaming live at Facebook. She is the award winning national security and border security investigative reporter for TV, radio, and the print media. Also, senior foreign policy advisor for the Committee for Responsible Foreign Policy. Kimberly is also TV correspondent, CW6 News San Diego, as well as One American News Network. And her website, the kdreport.com. Kimberly, Kimberly, how are you? I'm fine. How about yourself, Chuck? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, we're going to get into the border here in just a little bit, and I wanted to uh, discuss this other story that you broke here. Uh, well, I don't know. You could take it one way or the other, I guess. <laughs> anyway, the military now says they're going to pay for gender reassignment. Join the Navy. Join the Army. Join the Marines looking for a few good men they got to get rid of that now right <laughs> yeah apparently it'll be a, a few good people because we're not going to know yeah. what they are really at the very end of this um but really this is actually a very serious topic especially within the military yep. uh, as you know when you go through boot camp uh, you're expected to be you know at least very fit and be able to pass basic training and a lot of the people that will have surgery and go through the transition and whatnot will be on medication the rest of their lives after they go through this uh, process, which one of the major thing that's not being talked about out there is the cost that this is going to bear upon the military in the form of what, if you're on medications, you will be um, you will be able to get out of deployment. So let's say we need to send more people to Asia and there's a whole bunch of people that have gone through this process or going through the process and on medications, they'll be able to apply for waivers and they will not get deployed. So now they're getting all of these nice benefits that the military is offering them and they're not going to actually be able to be re you know, ready to serve for the United States military. The other side of this is once they get out of the military, they will be considered to have a, a VA disability so they're taking medications for surgery they're wanting to change the hormones and whatnot so now they're going to be eligible to obtain disability payments from the va once they get out and as we will probably um you know if we're looking into the magic you know you know ball here and we're looking to see what you know what a lot of these uh you know people are doing it'll be interesting to follow to see how long they stay in the military they may just stay yeah. four years until they get this process. They go out into the, the private sector. They can go on with their lives and they can still collect on their disability because now they're taking lifelong me medication. And this all, I mean, and we don't even know how this is going to end up in any event. I mean, this is, you know, still very new to have these surgeries and you're, we're looking at a huge cost of the military, already $8 million spent to treat approximately 1,500 um, people inside the military, this number is expected to ramp up because they're not going to be able to stop them from enlisting in the military because that will be, you know, part of the civil rights uh, protected class. And I think you mentioned it earlier, right? Did you give the number 161 surgeries? Yeah, 161 uh, surgeries 20, so far. <laughs> that was between 2016 and 2019, right? Yeah. So now they're expected to see a lot more um, there's a big push, you know, within the um, transgender community to, you know, allow people who are disadvantaged and aren't privileged, you know, the, not the 1%, because as you know, I mean, you go through surgeries like this and there's a cost. There's an emotional cost and there's a financial cost. And the financial cost prohibits a lot of people in the middle, middle class from even going that direction. So now they're looking yeah. to see the federal government is going to pick up the tab for this. Yet I use this as similar, I use this all the time. If you're a female and you wanna have breast augmentation, you're paying for it on your own. You wanna have Botox, you're paying for it on your own. If you want trans, you know, transgender surgery and you're gonna be on medication the rest of your life to stay on this you know, protocol, 
feel free to join the military. We will take care of you. So, uh, you know, I, I would I would gather that, you know, where are the feminists out there saying, you know, women can't go out and get what they want for themselves, but we're going to give it to the transgender community. And, you know, on top of that, again, we don't know what long term uh, treatment looks like for these types of surgeries and what kind of what, what it's, kind of toll it's going to have on the people and their bodies as the years pass and they're taking these medications. Does it lead to cancer? You know, does it lead to early death? I mean, these are things we just don't know. And it's, you know, right. quite amazing that the military is now going to be the one, you know, like, you know, leading the way, leading the charge, I guess, so to speak, uh, when it comes to transgender surgery. Yeah, sometimes I, you know, I, I look at it like, uh, because for so long they've said no, you know, uh, we don't want uh, transgenders in the military, all right? And, you know, and that was a Republican and a Democrat issue, you know, mainly. Yeah. Here's the thing, is that uh, it's, a, it's a time limit, I mean, a, a time frame, okay? If they come in and they say, I identify now as a woman or a man or whatever, so they get the operation and then they do the training, right? You don't start doing the training and then get the operation because the thing is you have to, Supposedly, you have to pass the rigged training in order to become an American soldier, okay, or yeah. sailor, or whatever, yeah. right? So this is simply, if you say, you know what, I can't afford to be a woman, but I want to be a woman. Well, why don't you just join the military, let them give you the operation, and then drop out? Yeah. Isn't that exactly what can happen? Yeah, that's that's exactly, I think that's what, you know, you know several folks that I've talked to at the Pentagon. Right, right. Yeah, that's what I've talked. Well, I, but I've talked to several folks over there, and they're just like, uh, you know, we're not a social experiment over here. We're supposed to. We have a mission. It's national security. We're supposed to protect uh, the American people. You know, here in the United States as well as abroad. That that's our job. Um, you know, one could like say maybe this is something the federal government ought to just open the you know open itself up to this and let the military do what the military is supposed to do because. If you're working in the federal government, you have a desk job, you're not going to be, they're not calling you up at the middle of the night saying, okay, nope, we're going to deploy like, you know, 1.3, you know, thousand troops and we need to get you out of here. And, you know, it just, it just seems to me that the better place for this, if this is where, what we're going to do as a country, let's move it to the, where, you know, the federal government, maybe over at, you know, the transportation department or you know you know name any number of federal agencies that that maybe want to take on this this issue but the military and people at the military and higher ups and people and generals who are retiring as a result of these issues these people are looking at saying this is not going to help our readiness as a nation and don't be no. you know do not be you know surprised that all of our enemies around the world are going <laughs> Bravo, bravo, America, carry on with this truck, because they're looking at this and they're seeing yet another weakness, another weakness. our country. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, let me take just a moment here, Kimberly, and I, and I hope uh, I don't spend too much on this, but whenever Trump was president, they were having a hearing on this, transgenders joining the military. Yeah. They credit this to Trey Gowdy's response, and I'll give you part of it. He said, nobody has a right to serve in the military. Nobody. What makes you think the military is an equal opportunity employer? It's very far from it and for good reasons. Let me cite a few. The mili military uses prejudice regularly and consistently to deny citizens from joining, all right, for being too old, too young, too fat, too skinny, too tall, too short. And he goes on, fat feet, if you don't have enough fingers, poor eyesight, bad teeth, malnourished, drug addiction, criminal history, low IQ, anxiety, phobias, hearing damage, six arms, hear voices in your head, and it goes on and on and on, and he finally said, did someone just scream that this isn't fair? Well, war isn't very unfair. There are two exceptions made for being special or challenged are socially wonderful. You must change yourself to meet the military standards and not the other way around. And then basically yeah. says, you know what? We're here to win wars, and that's the bottom line. Yep, and that's and, and that's all exactly. the military. Yeah, that's exactly what the military is supposed to be doing. And Trey Gowdy right. is 100 percent correct on absolutely everything he said there. That's the same thing that I'm hearing from my sources inside the Pentagon. There, like I said, there have been a couple of generals that have retired over these issues, saying, 
you know, I don't know what we're doing here. And again, maybe this is something that, you know, we as a country really want to participate in. I don't know that fact. Uh, and I don't know a lot of people who think that's, you know, necessarily appropriate. But, you know, if you're going to do that, let's throw these people over to the Transportation Department or the Health and Human Services Department or other agencies where it's not required that we're going to have to call them up in the middle of the night and say, look, you know, we, we need to deploy people immediately. We're going to war. Uh, Country X is trying to invade our country. We need you down there to, to protect us. That can't happen. And that's, that's why I think what we're seeing when you see a backlash yeah. within the military is like, wait a minute, that's not what we're about. And the inclusivity maybe comes from if they want to accept transgender people once they've already made the transition. Well, maybe then that's another issue that you, you could talk about over there. But telling people yeah. outright and having an executive order, and Joe Biden signed this on January 25th, this executive order, it said they mandate that the military will cover surgeries for transgender. Yeah, and of course there's somebody back there behind him saying, Hey, you promised you were going to do this. You promised, oh, yeah, I'll do this. Give me that pen. Give me another yeah. book. You know, that seems like what it's doing. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I know time is running short here, and there's uh, Republicans now renewing calls for the Democrats to hold a hearing on the growing crisis at the southern border. Hey, on your Facebook uh, earlier, I know you had some uh, tent city again. You know, yeah. boy, are, are, are these... Uh, you know, 63,000 coming across so far, whatever, are they going to take those tents away? Or are they going to furnish new tents? Or do they get to move into the motels and the hotels? Uh, well, I wonder what story. Yeah, well, what, when it comes to San Diego, what the Border Patrol has been forced to do is to put these folks up in hotels and motels. And as right. these hotels and motels fill up and people come in and they, they've got the green light and they, they're given this little piece of paper that says come back to court in three or four years, um, but you may want to just stay here so we can keep track of you. They're picking up whatever they brought with them across the border and they're leaving. They're leaving without getting COVID tests. They're leaving without, you know, being checked medically. They're just picking up and they're leaving and they're, you know, disappearing into the center of this country and in hopes that, you know, they, they are just going to be part of the new and latest amnesty pitch by the Democrats here. And that's pure and simple. And I just want to make this this contrast because you just you know spoke there about Trey Gowdy and that you it's right. you don't have a right to be in the, the US military. You have to pass. Well I actually uh, watched a, a Dalai Lama um, interview uh, a little bit ago. And in that he said you know they he was talk they were at, he was asked about the migrants around the world and that was this was like re, about the you know them going to Europe and don't doesn't Europe have a duty and obligation to take these people and the Dalai Lama said this is I mean this is astounding says no country has it has a right to accept migrants into their population and then they were asked about citizenship of these migrants and he said that you know what would help the the poorer countries around the world more would be that if they could help educate these people and then turn around and not offer them citizenship, but say at the end of their studies, they must, they must go back to their home countries because after an education, they'll be much better prepared to hopefully change and transition their poor country to becoming a first world country. So, I mean, here you have the Dalai Lama getting it saying, look, everybody's migrating. They're migrating for economic reasons, no doubt about it. And that's tough stuff to do. But by saying that you're going to be able to get the lottery and you're going to be able to like get and stay in this country where you're going to be offered free just about everything while the American people and the middle class have been decimated by this pandemic that continues to rage and continues to keep states closed down for business. So the economy's down, people aren't working, and we're accepting Thousands, I think, you know, the numbers this month, 100,000 people this month or in February alone came into the United States. That's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. 1,118,000 uh, 1, yep. so far for this fiscal year. And there was last year 69,000. Yeah. Uh, and, and then Nancy Pelosi, where we're doing it for the children. For the children. Well, that's what most people are complaining about is yeah. the children, you know. Yeah. And well, now people are complaining about because you're releasing COVID from, you know, not checking these people. 
Well, this is what Ms. Pelosi said as well. She said that they would, quote, we're transitioning to the right immigration policies now, and that this is just a humanitarian challenge. No crisis, challenge. And it's due to wow. the fact that we had, did not have the right immigration policies in place the last four years, so they have to transition to the right policies, and that's what we're watching down along the border. You can't make this stuff up. That's what she said word for word today. Yeah. And you know, uh, Arizona Republican Andy Biggs, he's calling for uh, a motion to vacate the chair to remove Nancy Pelosi. But you know, I think you and I know that, uh, and most of the Republicans know, and those other, and people that are getting, you know, the seeing the mirrors uh, are not getting the true picture. And you got to think about this, and this is, you know, I'm just going to say it like it is, uh, Kimberly. Nancy Pelosi doesn't give a damn about the children. The first thing she's thinking about is eventually getting those votes from those people coming over so the Democrats have even a stronger uh, hold on uh, taking the vote away from whoever's mm. running against them. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you're going to pay the piper. You, yep. heard that. Uh, you know, you mentioned in your latest uh, report that the taxpayer is going to be picking up the tab now for all these migrants coming in. And according to FAIR, that's going to be another 30 to $40 billion per year. But don't worry. Today the news came out that the income tax is going to be raised for all citizens. Okay, get ready. Yay. Uh, he promised that when he, when he was going to run. And so he says, yep, they're getting ready to raise income taxes for everybody. There we go. Uh, and I think mainly, pardon me? I said, there you go. There you have it. There you go. This will, no problem. We got the money. But you know what? It's only, uh, what did you say, uh, 30 to $40 billion a year? Yeah. <laughs> on top of you, yeah. Now. Exactly. So, yeah. And that's on top <laughs> of the 120 that we're currently paying for um, illegal immigration and for migrants coming to this country. But it's important to remember that the majority of these people coming to this country do not have any education. They do not have any skills other than manual labor. They don't have a lot to offer. They're going to be sending their kids to public school at a cost of roughly between eight and $12,000 per year per child. In just depends on what state you live in as far as the cost on that. And then, you know, you've got to, everybody's quick to say, well, they pay for, you know, they pay for taxes at the grocery store and stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's still not adding up to that, that alone, right. not to mention the free health care you know, that they're uh, going to be getting. You know, it's just, it's okay. We need to know. help these people lift themselves up. And again, I go back to the Dalai Lama on this. If this is what we're going to do as a nation yep. and this is what we're committed to, let's educate these people. Let's not grant them amnesty. And let's say after you're done with your K through 12, if you qualify for college, you can stay for four more you can, if you can pay for it on your own. Otherwise, you're going back to your home country, period. That's it. And then you will have countries that will have people who are educated um, and hopefully we'll be able to turn those countries around on their own because all we're doing is importing people to this country who are going to you know, bring the wages down for American workers and let's not forget high school kids. A lot of these jobs that they take, high school kids used to do and apparently they don't do those jobs anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's beyond them, boy, you know. Hey listen, Kimberly, I think, uh, you know, talk about grasping for straws. All right, and I guess it was early today or yesterday that Nancy Pelosi said, you know, it's not a crisis on the border. The reason for this whole thing, are you? did you hear what she said? I think Global you... warming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there did you, you go. That? That's crazy Nancy. And she said it with a halfway straight face, you know. Global oh. warming. That's why they have to get out of that area of the country. Yeah. Well, wow. I wonder how Ms. I wonder how Miss Pelosi feels because these children that are coming up are crossing using coyotes and the drug cartels. And what was reported earlier today as well is that the ch some of the children, if they can't keep up, they're left behind, and when they're left behind, they die. So I wonder if Miss Pelosi yeah. is worried about those children making the dangerous trek to the United States because of her open border wishes that these children are dying. They're dying because the coyotes and the cartels are leaving them behind. Well, I'll tell you, it just goes on and on and on. And uh, and 
you know, we talked about the, the bracelets they wear that shows how much yeah. you pay. And, yeah, uh, raping them. You know, I mean, there's just a litany of things yeah. that happen to these kids. By the time they get I here, they're broken. It. Yeah. All right, yeah. listen, I'm giving you one week off, but we'll uh, uh, do it in, the, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, one week later. Okay, go. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? I don't know. You know, hey, math was not my subject. You know, I studied the cheerleaders, and that was about as far as I got. All right. <laughs> Kimberly Seaborak, the KD Report.com. Thank you very much.